You're listening to The Practical Wealth Show with Curtis May. All right. Hey, welcome to Practical Wealth Live, another episode of The Practical Wealth Show. Hoping my audio is all right. As I record this, I'm in Phoenix getting ready for a program I'm in called Master Mentor, which we get together different parts of the country four times a year. So I am uh, didn't pack my mic, so hopefully this sounds all right. Get this out on the uh, podcast. But what I want to do, we've been on the road. So since I'm live, I've been to the Infinite Banking Big Take, which is the goal of this is to get some thoughts about infinite banking, which is what, you know, we specialize in. And so just to kind of give you the context of the framework of how my firm teaches banking, there's principles, principles drive strategy, right? And strategy drives tactics. So we teach the five principles of personal finance, save maximum protection, full replacement of assets at debt liquidity, six to 12 months of liquidity and velocity of money. And so those are the principles that we teach to help our clients become and remain financially free. Okay. So principles drive strategy. So to me, infinite banking is a strategy. So the strategy is really learning how to take a page out of the financial institutions playbook out the picture. There we go. Out of the financial institutions playbook and doing, as I say, is do what they do with money. Don't do what they do what they do. Don't do what they tell you to do. Right? So the strategy is how to get interest moving towards you rather than away from you. with Chris Corden and Nelson Nash, his book, become your own banker, right? 35% of every dollar. 35 cents of a dollar leaves most people's households, or what we like to call personal economy in the form of debt to others. Okay. And, and so while most people can see what people don't realize is the problem. See, Nelson says, if you don't know problem, the solution doesn't matter. Okay. And, uh, so principles drive strategy. Strategy one is be the bank, learn how to control. Cause you're all, all y'all, you all are already bank. Okay. You just don't own the bank and banking. When I say banking for all the the appliance people out there, (laughs) the banking just means creating a pool of capital money that you control that can move at cost to meet some needs you have. If the tax tactic is a product that you buy is properly structured, dividend paying whole life with a mutual company. Okay. And so this is the process that we take our clients through. Sometimes I interview so many people. I never really talk about, you know, here's what we do, you know, for clients. Okay. Our goal is to help our clients become financially independent in a decade or less. Okay. And financially independent, meaning passive income greater than your expenses. Okay. And without wall street, without, you know, without this equities, you know, more so where most of the people that work with us. Their goal is, you got to ask yourself, is this me? Their goal is what I call work optional income. Meaning if you shut it down, you still have, you know, what Jim Rohn says, financial independence is being able to live like you want to live from the income from your personally invested assets without a job. Okay. So let's back up. So it was in Birmingham. Then I was speaking at the laundromat millionaire, shout out Dave Menz, teaching some of this stuff to, to, uh, a really fascinating industry, the laundromat industry, which I'm excited about getting deep and working with some of the, some of the, you know, a lot of the people there and teaching kind of this stuff, how to be a troll, because what our premise of our talk was that typical financial advice is literally bad for business owners. I mean, it, it's, it's because you're being taught to send money away from you and put it at risk when you're goal should be to maintain control of it because if you're doing it, you're, you know, your business better than anybody else, you know, your business better than some fund manager around the way. And so one of the things Nelson Nash talked about, so the great thing about the think tank was that, so let's talk about that. So I'm gonna talk about the think tank. So the, there's a couple of thoughts from that, that I just want to get out there and share. And it was funny because it was, for me, it was back to basics. So what you want to do is you want to go to the source. Like if, if you haven't 
had it. One of the things that I put out there is when people are, I get a lot of people on Instagram asking me about this. And I always send them back to, I want you to get or the, the book or the audio book of Becoming Your Own Banker by R. Nelson Nash, Building Your Warehouse House of, of Wealth or Two Up to Wealth by R. Nelson Nash. And let's see the other book, A Case for IBC, really designed for business owners. So guys, if you don't, if you think people, because people say, well, I got a whole life. Can I do it with that? See, so if, if, if you've never heard this book from your agent, I be willing to bet you money that your policy is not set up for banking, quote unquote, which means high early cash value. And it's not even about the policy. So one of the things I'm going to talk about the book. So you get to the book. One of the things that, that was brought out or, or re Brunched in my mind. So you always got to go back to the source and you go around to the best and the best, right? Steel, sharp and steel, right? And so it's a big mastermind of people. And we've talked shop. How do you help people? Because a lot of people t call me this about whole life, you know, insurance, oh, whole life. I already got whole life. Isn't insurance expensive? And I'm missing the whole point. Okay. I have agents want to compare a whole life to, you know, index universal life. It has nothing to do with nothing. So when you start telling me stuff like that, that I know you don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Ages. If you happen to listen to this and, and if you're talking to somebody and about this and they haven't showed you, you really recommend, or they don't do a book review with you, they don't understand the book. They don't know what they're doing. Okay. And they, you shouldn't have learned on your, on your dime. So let's talk about ownership. So one of the things is that you've got to be in business. See, one of the things you've got to want to be in control of your life, right? And in the book, Nelson used the example. Let me see if I can share this without screwing it up. Nelson uses the example of a grocery store. And I don't know, one second, let me see if I can find this. And he says, you can, what you want to be able to do is she wanted to create a business where you're both the consumer, because you all eat groceries, you all have to feed your family. You want to be a consumer. So this, if you're seeing this, Nelson wants you to be able to have a business where you're both the consumer and the user. Okay. So the grocery business is fascinating because I listening to it again, I just understood it. You know, I just re understood it. You know, somebody had to break it down to me again. Right. And, uh, and so think about this. So if you are shopping. And so the grocery store is this. So infinite banking is about ownership. A lot of people think it's about insurance, but it's really just a system of money management. Okay. And so here is the, the key is that you must have the discipline to manage your own money. Okay. And so if you're unwilling to do that, this is not a good strategy for you to be quite honest, really. And so. So the grocery store is, let's say you own the store. Okay. And you've got to go and, you know, and so we actually have it. So I'll tell you from personal experience. So I used to go at five, I used to go with my mother to get beat at like nine, 10. I used to go to the docks so I'm from Philly, down to the docks in South Philly. Got my grandfather used to live in Longside and I would, when I stayed with him for the weekend, we would stop in Monday morning, you would get, and I would go with my dad to the, to the place to get the, you know, the, the canned goods and that kind of stuff. And so one of the things Nelson talks about in the book, if you sell, let's say a can of peas for in the book, he talks about 60 cents, I think a little bit higher than that. I don't do as much, that much, most of the majority of the shopping and they cost when you sell them by the case, maybe 57, 58 cents, you sell them for 60 cents. So you've got to turn those peas over, you know, 15, 18 times just to make a profit. Okay. So we talk about velocity of money. Velocity is how fast money moves. So every business is about velocity, right? So the, I was talking to large metal owners, you know, they talk about turns. They want bigger machines so they can have people get in and out with big, you know, with one load, cause they've got these huge washers and dryers. They don't need to have like four machines lined up. And you can see more people more efficiently. You know, hairstyles will call it turns. You know, restaurants want to turn over tables. All that's velocity of money. And so nobody waits, buys and holds, and hope the magic of compilations work. That's just not a thing. All right. 
And so you've got to get in the velocity. So you, you know, you, you want to care if it's a, a, a MLM or something like that. You need to be in business for yourself. The tax code favors you, but that's a different talk. So now, so let's talk about that. So let's say you need groceries for your family. You own the store. And this is Nelson's point. When you, your spouse loads up the groceries, are you, are you going to go out the front door or the back door? Me and are you going to load the cart and go past the cash register and pay yourself retail, you know, pay for the groceries through the front door retail or go out the back door. So the big temptation is to go out the back door. Like, look, this is all my stuff anyway. And so that's. Actually, how I used to think died. My mother never, you know, she, we own a supermarket, so she did not go to Acme or Superfresh or, you know, um, we we're from Pennsylvania, you know, Wegmans, you know, we didn't go there because you, you know, we, all, we shopped at our own store, and even though we got it wholesale, just because if you, if you don't, if you go out the back door, then you've got to sell that, you might have to turn that money over 25 times and make up for the money that you lost. And so what Nelson calls that is stealing. Okay. And so what a lot of people will do is we talk about infinite banking. So now think about the banking process of banking, right? You've got three players in the play. You've got the, the saver or the depositor, you've got the bank and you've got the borrower. Okay. So most people are one, really two of those, right? Most people are the depositor. You get paid, your money goes. Your money's already going into somebody's bank. I asked my clubhouse, tell me, I don't know if I believe this banking thing. There is nothing to believe. You already do it. You just don't control the, you don't own the bank. You don't own the bank. You don't control, you're not controlling the banking process. Okay. Which is all we're talking about. And here's, here's, here's a, a, a fun fact. You do not need a life insurance to policy to be the bank. Okay. Banking is a concept. Okay. So let me give you an example of uh, go off on a tangent of banking. So let's say my grandmother would never have debt, right? So she wanted a new, I remember to, I was like oh, seven or eight. She wanted a new dining room set. She would work, she would save and she would pay cash. So let's say, let's say the dining room set costs a thousand dollars. Okay. So she fit. And so she would save it up. Okay. And then she would go pay cash for it. And now here is the banking. So let's say she wanted to replace her thousand dollars. Then let's say y'all seen this. I won't say mattress, but I don't know where I actually puts money in the mattress, but let's say you a, a drawer or a, a Folgers coffee can. I have seen this where you keep cash. So what if you put, went back to work and you put $25 a week in that can, right? Or a hundred dollars a month. And 12 months later, what would you have in that can? You placed your thousand dollars that you used to pay for, that you used to pay for the dining room table, but you had $1,200 in there because you were honest banker and you, you, you know, you, you accounted for the lost use of your money. Folks, that is banking right now. See, so if you don't have the discipline to do that, that's, that's one of the things that, that we teach It's about ownership. Nelson says everybody needs two businesses. The one that gives them a paycheck and their banking business, which is a saving strategy and giving you a superior place to store cash. So lesson one that I'm really starting to drive home with our clients and, and we got somewhere where I was coming out, we're going to do a, a banking a boot camp shortly. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned to the show. That's one idea. So I, I got out of that the grocery store and that this is this whole system. The whole book is about ownership. Okay. As you really look at the book, I want to give you something. Another thing that was said, and I'll end with this one, I'm gonna keep this a short video, is premium is the solution, not the problem. So I'll have people say to me, well, how little can I start with? That is, or how much does it cost? You know, that is absolutely the wrong question. Question is how much of your cash flow can you save? Because you have to capitalize system. You've got to capitalize your system for two, three, four, five years. That's somebody tell me, and this person was putting away a, a client, a real estate investor client. And this is probably, it was, it's a good amount. It's probably not good enough for her, 
but you got to start somewhere. She's, you know, this person's putting away about 20,000 a year. Okay. 16, 67 a month. And you're like, well, you know, she's looking at the, the program. It's going to take me 15 years to buy a house with this. Yeah, it is. Okay. At the rate you're saving, it's not a mad money box. I mean, you're only burning some money you put in there. You're collateralizing your cash value or your savings. Okay. So it's not like, you know, a lot of people think, well, I'm, they, they think they're borrowing against the insurance. You're not borrowing against the death benefit of the insurance. You're borrowing against the cash values, which is your savings part, right? So you have to capitalize. And so, you know, you still will use third-party capital, but you've got to pay the premium. So I was listening to Nelson's Nash's the author of the book, his live video. So Nelson does a 10 hour, he did, sorry, a 10 hour two day workshop that I've been through several times. Okay. And I was watching the video and when one of the lessons from the book and I, and I got this lesson when I was at the, when I was at the think tank premium is the solution, not the problem. And I was talking to a friend of mine. She goes, I got it. I need more policies. And she was paying at the time of our conversation, like a hundred thousand dollars a year in premium. Because it's not, she's not buying insurance premium for her, where it really is once you start to get the concept is a deposit, right? And she's capitalizing her banking system. So she buys her cars, vacations through her banks. And so we're doing it too. But I was like, oh, I'm thinking about this wrong. Right? So now I'm applying for more money. Our income has gone up and I need to put run more of it through my system. So this was, you know, just talking to me here because I, you know. I do this stuff. This is not, I'm not just out here, this is for a cartoon and out here whistling Dixie. <laughs> so this is what we do, but it's, it's, it's fascinating that you just got to get around people to see that, okay, I'm not thinking about this right. Right. And so Nelson said in his video, where the idea, so infinite banking is a, is a exercise in imagination. Oh, what did he say? I'm going blank right now as I do this live imagination, prophecy, and logic okay imagination and so he got himself to a situation so he was in the real estate but he was into land and timber he was a forester right and so he was buying land and, and flipping it so you buy it leverage this is in the late 70s mid to late 70s at eight nine percent and then i remember this because i was in my ninth or tenth grade interest rates shot up to mortgage rate shop to 17%. You know, back in the day, uh, annuities paid and uh, CDs paid 15%. Money market accounts. I remember when I was in high school, money market accounts, they're paying less than 1% now, paid like 18% interest. That means if you, so that's real interest, compound interest. That means if you had that, your money would double every four years using rule 72. So that's changed. So all of a sudden, Rate shot up on him went from nine to what you, 23%. And he owed half a million dollars, ended up being about $800,000, which is a couple million dollars in today's dollars, like one and a half million dollars in today's money. At 23%, can you think of the interest payments on that? And so here is, and he said this, I remember it was at a conference with him and it clicked for me. After I'm out of doing this, I've had the book for a year, like, you know, and uh, my second time I saw him. And I didn't get this. That's what I mean. People say, well, I read the book and I get it. What's next? You don't get it. Trust me. All right. And he goes, this is what most people do. So he was already paying in his mind, big premiums. Right. And he, he was up uh, $18,000 a year. So for the late seven, that's a lot of money to pay for a short, 18, 19, 20 right a year. And so he, he says, all right, he calculated that. So his mind didn't go, oh man, I got to get rid of insurance. I have all this money. His mind went, okay, I need to increase my premiums to about a hundred thousand dollars a year. I need to be paying this for insurance premium because he looked at premium as a solution because he needed to capitalize his system so he could turn around leverage the cash values and begin to buy his debt back at, you know, and at more reasonable rates, 8% simple interest, you know, from one of the insurance companies he was using and then begin to recapture, I think that's the proper word, 
the monies that he was sending away, but he could pay it back on his time frame. And then when he had windfalls, he sold land for fifty or hundred thousand dollars. He would boom pay the loans back. They gave him a place to drop the money. And so what you've got to look at. So back to my earlier story, it's like, all right, you know, because I start people with, well, what, what, what do you think I should start with? Well, you know, I recommend people save for starters fifteen to twenty percent of their gross income. So if you make a hundred grand, you should be saving fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. So now if you can't do that. That's another problem. So we need to talk because I will help you find the money. That's really the work. So the policy part is easy. Once you have the display, we set it up, we automate it. But the hard part is where is your money going? Okay. And if you don't know, see, most wealth is lost five ways. So this is how you find the money, begin to capitalize your system. I'm going to do another video on this is to one, most wealth is lost for how people manage cash flow. Okay. So we look at creating a cash flow map so we can see where your money is going. And then we want to tell it where to go instead of asking where it went. That's one. Two is through wealth transfers. All right. And so the process is not about chasing returns. It's about finding more efficiency. Right. And so the top, there's like 20, but the top five wealth transfers are how you've been trained to pay your mortgage taxes, how you fund retirement plans or crop out plans how you pay for educational expenses and how you pay for major capital purchases. So there's more money lost in those five things I just mentioned than you ever make trying to pick wedding investments. So the first thing I do is, is kind of deconstruct your personal economy and then reconstruct it so that it works better for you. So those are the types of things as you get set up for this, you got to think like an owner, you've got to control the money that is flowing through your life. Okay. And then you want to build a system of money management. So that keeps all of the money. You know, one of the things Kiyosaki says in, um, I think it's the third principle in rich dad, poor dad is you have to mind your own business and your business in his context is your asset column. And he says, once it hits your asset column, your goal is to never to let it leave. Okay. And so see, even after investors that are listed this, even if you took, you had capital saved and you take 20 grand, 30 grand, I was talking some business, it'll take a hundred grand, liquidate their capital, even to go buy an asset, you still are losing money because you're not accounting for opportunity costs, which is a real thing. And so you got to look at that and you have to be a little bit more financially savvy and how you look at your money. And so the key is I'm going to end with this. See if you know what's going on, you'll know what to do. And so one of the things is you've got to I challenge you to take a look at your personal economy and figure out what's going on. You know, where are you now? Where do you want to go? Is the magic question, right? And get with a coach that will help you map that out. Okay. So this is Curtis May, your Money for Life guide. If this intrigues you at all, reach out. You know, you, if you want, I have a, a report that we give away called Be in the Bank, which is the value of liquidity. And if you text Be the Bank to 55444, we'd love to get that point, that that out, you know, that report out to you. And we'd love to have a conversation. So if this intrigues you, you want to know about what is this bank that being Curtis is talking about, go to www.practicalwealthadvisors.com, click apply to work with Curtis. And you can, you know, schedule a no obligate conversation with me or one of the, my coaches. And let's get you on the road to financial freedom. Let's get you on the road controlling the money that flows through your life. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to Practical Wealth. To access the show notes and resources, go to practicalwealthshow.com. To get your questions on the show, go to practicalwealthshow.com. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Before you make any investment decisions, consult a professional. This show was copyrighted by Practical Wealth. Written permission must be granted before syndication.